Hi, and in today's Microsoft Word tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a letterhead in the headers and footers of your document. Now, obviously, when you place things in the headers and footers, they will continue to every page of your document. But one trick I will show you um, is slightly surprising about where you can place those graphics and they will still remain in your headers and footers. So here's my default document and to get to my headers and footers I just take my cursor to the top of my page and double click. And you can see now I'm in the header and the footer. Now I'm going to go up to the insert tab here, I'm going to show you a quick trick. If I go to shapes here, click on the drop down and just select a shape. If I click and drag here you can see this shape is not actually within this header here. However, if I click out of my headers and footers, that shape has now greyed out and is actually part of the headers and footers. So if I insert a new page, you can see that that shape has continued onto the next page. What this means is that once you're in your headers and footers, Whatever you place within your document, anywhere in your document, Word will ensure that that goes into your headers and footers. I can place this wherever I want and it will still remain within the headers and footers and therefore will appear on every page of your document. Good tip because it means that if you do want something to overlap this line, believing that you've got to get it within this space up here, then that's not necessarily the case. So now what we can do is create any number of graphics within the header and footer aspects and they will continue onto each page. So let's just get rid of this rectangle and now what I'll do is just create a simple letterhead. So the first thing I want to do is to insert my logo. So go up to insert, I'm going to go to pictures, picture from file. Then I'm going to select my logo and then click insert. Now it will come up like this and it will completely mess up your page but don't panic just right click on your image go down to wrap text then go down to in front of text and then all we need to do is click and drag and resize that logo. Now I'm just going to get rid of this page so we can just look at this page here. Now I'm just going to create some text for a logo here. If you don't want to know how to do that, then do scroll through and I will place the graphics in next. But if you want to know how to put some text into your header or footer, then just continue watching. So I'm now going to go up to insert, along to text box, click on the drop down and select draw text box. Then I'm just going to click and drag. Then I'll just insert my text. Now if this is text for my logo, I'm just going to change the font. So I'm just going to highlight the top word, go up to the Home tab, I'm going to go to Fonts, and I'm going to select this text here, Futura. Increase the size. Then I'm going to select the word Company, go back up, and go to Avenir. And then I'm just going to increase that by one using the up and down font size tools here, these icons. Then I'm just going to bring that text box in. If I click off the text box, you can see that my text has a black border. And actually within this text box, there's also a white background. So we need to get rid of both of those. So I'm going to click back in the headers and footers, click back on the text box, go to shape format, go along to this outline tool here and select no outline, go to shape fill, click on the drop down and select no fill. Then I'm just going to line this up with my logo icon here. Another way that I can do this is to select the text hold down my command or control key and select the icon here. Then go up to the align tool here, click on the drop down and select align to middle. 
That will ensure that these two squares line up perfectly and this text is lined up with this icon. Once you've done that and you're happy with its alignment, we can go up once you've selected both of these items, go up to group, click on the drop down and select group. Now we can move this around anywhere in our document. Now because I want to put some graphics along here, I want to move this blue line out of the way. So I'm going to go over to my rulers. If you can't see rulers, then just go up to the view tab at the top and then go down and select ruler. You can also go across here to view and then make sure that ruler is checked here. I'm going to go down to this bottom section here between the white and grey section. I'm going to hover my cursor until it turns into a double headed arrow and then click and then just drag it down. Now this means two things. First of all it moves this out of the way but it also means that when you want to then type any text your cursor will appear in this area here and not at the top here as it would do in a default document. So just bear that in mind, but there is a workaround for that. So now I'm just going to place this up at the top where I want that to line up for my letterhead. The next thing I want to do is to insert some graphics. So I'm going to go up to insert, I'm going to go to shapes, click on the drop down, go down to rectangles and I'm going to just insert this rectangle here. And then all I'm going to do is click and drag. Just drag to the end of your document. It doesn't matter if you go over the top because Word will cut that section off. Now what I'm going to try to do is to line this up with roughly the same size as my icon, the same height as my icon there. And then move it about there for my graphic. Now I want to change the colour of this box. I'm going to do that first before I then copy and paste it, use it over here and then use it at the bottom. So I'm either going to double click into my shape where this format menu will appear here or I just click format pane. This icon will only appear if you have selected your shape. So with every shape you have a fill colour which is the inside colour and the line colour, which is the outline. So for this demonstration, I don't want to have a line, so I'm just going to click no line. The next thing I want to do is to have a gradient, but for this, I'm just going to have to zoom in because I want to take the colours from my icon. So I'm going to go down and click gradient. Now here you're given a number of different options and I'll just quickly run through these. Let me just change my screen. So in the top one here you've just got your presets of gradients and you can select from a number of choices. You also have the option of how your gradient will lie, whether you want a radial gradient, a rectangular gradient, a path gradient or a linear. I'm going to stick with linear and as a result we then have a direction icon here, click on the drop down and you can see how your linear gradient can appear. So I've selected one of these two here. It doesn't matter which one, but I, I will select this linear right. And so what that means is that my left hand color here will lie on the left and the right hand color will lie on the right. If I swap them round, you can see that although my red color here is still on the left, in my actual shape that appears on the right. So I always think it's better just to have them lined up as they lie in the gradient tool. So the next thing is selecting your colors. You have these little markers on your gradient slider. When you click on them, they have a little orange outline. You can add some more of these stops and colors and you can also remove them. So once you've selected your marker, you need to change the colour of that marker if you wish to do so. So go down to colour and click on the drop down. You've obviously got a number of colours here that you can select from, but if you don't see the one of your choice, then just go down and click more colours. 
Here you'll have your color wheel where you can select from a number of different colors. You just move around this cursor around your color wheel and then you can see this box here changes color. You can also change the brightness of that color by using this slider. You've also got this really handy eyedropper tool. This tool allows you to select from any color within your document. So if you do have a color swatch and you do find something on the internet you'd like to copy or you'd like to grab the idea from, then just insert it as a screenshot. Then you can take the eyedropper tool here, then you can go over to your icon and the circle will magnify the color that you're hovering over. So I'm going to select this pink and then I'm going to click OK. And you can see the left hand side of my shape has turned to that color pink. I then go over to my right hand marker, click on it, and you can see that the color icon has changed to yellow to match the marker. Click on the drop down. I'm going to go down to more colors again, to my eyedropper tool, and then I'm going to hover over my logo again and select the orange. And then just click OK. And as you can see, my markers turn to orange, as has my color and my shape. So let's zoom out. Perfect. So once you're happy with this graphic, you can copy and paste it. So there's three ways you can do that. You can go to the Home tab. You can click Copy and then Paste. Or you can hold down Command or Control C and then Command or Control V and it will paste again. Or you can hold down your Alt or Option key whilst clicking and dragging and it will copy that shape. Now all I want to do, because I want to have the pink aspect on both sides of my logo, I'm going to turn this shape round. The way to do that is just to grab this circular arrow here and then just spin it round. Right, you can see now that both of my shapes are selected because I've just copied and pasted. To stop that from happening, just go up and click on your logo and then click back onto your shape. Then just turn it round. If you hit the shift key, it will move in increments. So then once it hits 180 degrees, then we can go ahead and move this up to where we want it to go. Now, obviously you want this to line up perfectly with this side. And the way to do that is to make sure it's selected, hold the command or control key down, select this one here. So you've selected both of those rectangles. Go up to shape format, go along to align, click on the drop down and select align to middle. This will ensure that both of these central squares here are perfectly lined up. If you want to make these two shapes into one shape, just go up to group and select group. Then you can just move these two shapes around as you see fit. If you want the logo to be included in that group, then hold the command or control key down again, click on your logo and as you can see, it's all highlighted. Go back to shape format, click on the group and select group. And then once again, this will all move around together. Okay, so now we want to make the graphic for the bottom. So I'm just going to ungroup it. Ungroup it again. And then I'm just going to click on my rectangle, hold the Alt or Option key down, click and drag. And let's just go down to the bottom of the document. And then I'm going to place this at the bottom. You can place this wherever you want. And then I'm going to stretch it out across the page. You don't have to. You can have it so the ends are showing. And then I'm just going to drop it down so it's perfectly lined up with the bottom of the document. If you find it gets a bit clunky, then hold the command or control key down and the control key and then use your down arrow. Perfect. So let's just zoom out. And then if we just click onto our main document, double click, 
you can see how that's looking. Now I'm just going to nudge this top bit up because I think the gap between the top of the page and here is a little too wide so I'm going to double click back on it. I'm going to make this all into a group again so I'm going to click on everything whilst holding down my command or control key, go up to shape format, go to group, select group. Then I'm just going to use my up arrow and then double click into the centre of my document to come out of the headers and footers and I'm happy with that. So the next thing I want to do is just to add some contact information at the bottom here. So click back into my headers and footers, doesn't matter if I click at the top or the bottom. Then I'm going to go up to insert, along to text box and draw text box. Then I'm going to just click and drag, enter in my contact details, then adjust the font, select it all, home tab, font selection, and I think I'll go to Futura again. Just increase the size by using this increase font size icon. Then again, I'm going to take off the background and the outline. If I click and drag this to the bottom, you can see exactly what I mean. So this text box comes with a black border and a white background. So let's just get rid of that. So go up to shape format, make sure that your text box has been selected. Go to the outline icon and select no outline. Go to shape fill, click on the drop down and select no fill. I'm going to format this text box exactly the way I want it because then I've, all I've got to do is just copy and paste it. Okay. I'm going to change the colour of the font as well because I want it to become white on this background. So I'm going to double click inside my text box, Command Control A to highlight all of my text, go up to the Home tab, select the font colour icon here. I'm going for white but you can go for any colour you like. And then click back onto it. Sometimes these text boxes and shapes are a bit clunky. If you want to move these things around, you have to make sure you're not in the text box, but on the text box. When you're in it, double click, your cursor will be inside and you can type. To come out of it, you can click on the outline or you can click onto another shape and click back on it. It's entirely up to you. So now I'm just going to hold my Alt or Option key down, click and drag and do that one more time. No, you can see they've been highlighted again. I keep making that mistake. So I'm going to go back, Command or Control Z. So I click on the shape or the gradient, click back on to my text box, and then Alt key, click and drag. Okay, so let's just change the information in here. Double click inside, Command or Control A to highlight all of the text. Place my email. If your email address slides off the end or disappears, all you've got to do is just stretch out that text box. So grab the ends of that text box and then just move it out. And this one, double click, Command or Control A, again just stretch that out. So now that we have all of these text boxes equally distributed at the bottom and perfectly centred, I'm going to select them all so hold my command or control key down again and just select them all. Go up to shape format and go along to the align tool here. Click on the drop down and then go all the way down to distribute horizontally. And this will mean that they're all equally distributed. So click on that one and then go back up to align. And then you want to align them to the middle. So click on that one and it will mean now that they're all perfectly lined up. Okay, we've just not stretched this one out enough, so let's just move that one out. Let's just align them again. Okay, now to ensure that they're all aligned to the centre of your document, I'm going to group them, so keep them all selected. Go up to group, click on the drop down and select group. Now that that group is one element, go back up to align, click on the drop down 
and select align to center. So I've just noticed that I haven't stretched this one out again. So let's just go down to that one, ungroup it, stretch that one out. Now make sure all of your text is centered within your text box. So if I just click on the shape a second, here we go. Click on this text box here, go to the home tab, select center, same with this one, select center, this one, and select center. And we'll just realign those again. So we'll just group them again, and then just align that group into the center once again. So then to go on to check that this has worked correctly, if you just go up to insert, page break, page break again, and again, just zoom out. And here you can see that your design is on all four pages. And once you've zoomed out, of course, you can have a really good look to check that it's exactly the way you want it to look. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please subscribe and have a great day.
and that will ensure that all of these three are perfectly lined up with the centre of your document. Once you're happy, click back into the centre of your document to just check that everything's the way you want it to. To just check everything's lined up the way you want it. Now because your header and footer, we've moved the header and footer down to this area here, you can see that your first cursor will lie here when you want to type. Now if you don't want that to happen, then you can go back into your headers and footers and you can adjust this again. OK, so once you're happy, you can test it out. You can place your cursor, go up to Insert and select Page Break. And as you can see, if we just keep clicking Page Break, and let me zoom out, you can see that your header is now placed on every single one of your pages. You can also see how this looks. Sometimes I feel like zooming out gives you a better idea about how it's actually going to look. If I click back in the headers and footers, you can see how it'll look once it's printed. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please subscribe and have a great day.